so name, my name is Hartmut Mulberg and I'm uh, working in Katrin's lab in Jülich and uh, in my talk I want to give you a progress report on the uh, updated processing pipeline application to existing annotations and cortical surface of Big Bang 2. Well, the 3D reconstruction of a... Oh, sorry. Oops. Yeah. Uh, the 3D reconstruction of a big brain requires not only a considerable amount of time and personal but also a lot of skills and experience in many fields of modern image processing and cannot be done by an institute alone in a reasonable amount of time. Therefore, as with Big Brain 1, the data was collected, curated in Jülich, manual and auto same automatic repairs were performed in Jülich, and Claude from the MNI computes, among other things, 3D reconstructions of this data set. The Big Brain 2 is from a male who died uh, uh, of bronchial pneumonia in 1994 at the age of 30 years, which is pretty young for a postmodern brain. The postmodern time was about 25 hours, and the formerly fixed brain was scanned in Munich 2004 uh, with a Siemens Sonata 1.5 Tesla mass scanner at a resolution of 0 0.5. Sorry, this is the wrong. <laughs> this is the wrong uh, millimeter. Uh, preparation, sectioning, and histological processing took place in Düsseldorf at the Vogel Institute uh, and resulted in a total of 7,676 cell body stained coronal sections at 20 micron uh, thickness. For the digitalization, uh, a flatbed scanner with a, a maximum resolution of 10 microns was used, and later also a Huron tissue scope scanners which provide uh, a maximum resolution of 1 micron. However, data processing uh, for the Fiji reconstruction uh, is based only on images from the flatbed scanner. A 3D reconstruction of a big brain data set is very challenging due to the size and amount of data to be processed, requires extensive resources, and is therefore very, very time consuming. It is based on the scanned sections and the MI data set, which serves as a 3D volume reference. At the end of the 3D reconstruction, a volume at different resolution uh, levels is available, which can then be visualized with the help of Atelier 3D, for instance, or which coming soon with the Zebra Explorer. Uh, with the help of the safe transformations, annotations that were collected in the original data can also uh, you use to reconstruct uh, map structures. So, of all the most histological processing steps were carried out with a lot of know-how in our labs, the digitized histological sections saw a large number of artifacts. And of course, uh, to achieve a good 3D reconstruction, most of these artifacts must be repaired. In order to re record the artifacts, both quantitatively and qualitatively, we have divided them into two, uh, three uh, groups, staining artifacts, damages without loss and damage with loss. And, uh, and on, the, di and, and, and on the, you know, the diagram on the bottom shows the distribution and the strength uh, of the individual artifacts as a result of a manual classification. And as a result, you find out that about 30% of all sections must be repaired. An example of a repair shown here on the right side. For the manual repair, we use a tool that includes a number of fundamental imaging processing to, uh, tools and, in order to allow a provenance tracking, uh, logging information of all processing steps are stored on disk. Well, quality control is an essential component of any complex framework. Here it means that every section in every processing step must be visually checked to ensure that all processing steps have led to the re desired result. We use an online tool that allows different types of feedback annotations uh, to be placed. The result of our team of writers coming from Paris, Montreal and Jülich can be viewed online and based on their feedback, uh, a decision can be made as to which section require a further or a renewed uh, repairment or a new uh, processing. For the computation of the 3D reconstruction, every fifth section repaired in Jülich was used, which effectively corresponds to a layer spacing of 100 microns. The first step, a critical aspect, was the align with the postmortem MRI scan uh, at a resolution of 0 0.5 millimeter. The process started with a rigid body alignment and then progressed to a fine and then to nonlinear 2D and 3D registration steps. To achieve a desired precision, 11 global iterations, both linear and nonlinear, were required. The figure here on the right show how the MI data set was aligned step by step in 2D and 3D to the histological section shown here on the far left. Afterwards, a section to section alignment independent from the MI was employed and involved a multi-scale nonlinear alignment to the mid positions of adjacent neighbors. This method ensured that each section was aligned with its neighboring sections, ensuring continuity and consistency throughout the complete data set. Optical balancing was applied to scale the mean and variance of intensity to match that of the MRI scan. 
Additionally, each section's uh, intensity was balanced to the average intensity of adjacent neighbors. Finally, volumes were created at a resolution, at, at a resolution of 100 and, micron, and 200 microns, and additionally, uh, it was converted to 50 by 50 by 100 micron to use in Atelier for D. So here we see the reconstructed data set on the left side uh, in Atelier 3D. Notice the much better quality. Uh, and um, when you take a look here, you see, for instance, how smooth the layer one boundary is. And especially the subcortical regions are now much better resolved than in the big brain one, which I will be shown later in detail. Well, to compute the cortical surface model, the data set was classified into gray matter and white matter at 200 microns. First, mass were created uh, for the subcortical areas in the cerebellum, as shown here on the left side. Afterwards, as shown in the middle, 300 plus priors were set for the gray matter of the cerebral cortex, shown here on the green, and as well uh, as 300 priors for the white matter, as shown here in blue. Uh, finally, a white, white matter classification uh, for the complete data set was computed, which is shown here on the right side. With this data set, you can, class, you can compute with uh, an adapted version of CIVET uh, uh, cortical surface models, which are shown here by default from left to right, a PL, a smooth white matter, and an inflated surface were computed with an identical number of vertices and triangles for each side. In addition, uh, a spherical representation, not shown here, was computed. Uh, which is necessary to compute uh, transformations with MSM, for instance. Well, the high resolution data set uh, allows a larger structure to annotate it directly within it. As an example, on the left side, you can see the hippocampus structure uh, annotated by John de Quaker, which will he present in his talk uh, in detail uh, in the afternoon. Well, in contrast, in Jülich, the annotations are drawn in the unrepaired and non-reconstructed original sections, here shown on the right side. Uh, the big advantage is that you have a direct link to the one micron data sets, uh, and that helps for the, for the annotation very well. So far, we have 143 structures already annotated in the Big Bang 2, and uh, with the pre-computed uh, transformation, we can transform the annotations into the 3D reconstructed Big Brain 2 sp uh, space. And here we see the thalamus structures annotated in Big Brain 2 by Harry Eulings as an example. So due to the high resolution, big brains allow, of course, very detailed insight into the microstructure. In order to be able to use this uh, benefit in context of an analysis, a link to the well-known MNI reference systems is required. There, too, a transformation between the big brain 2 volume and the MNI space was computed first. The result is here shown on the left side. In order to support uh, surface-based analysis, such as performed in the well-known free surfer or in the uh, connectome, uh, human connectome project, a transformation of the cortical surface to the surfaces of other res reference systems is required. We used here the MSM tool uh, to compute here a transformation from the MNI Collins surface to the Big Brain 2 surface. Shown here on the right side is the Ulich Brain Atlas in the latest uh, 3.1 version, which will be released in the next weeks. Uh, here transformed into the Big Brain 2 space. Finally, I want to compare the Big Brain 1 data sets with the Big Brain 2 data, data set. We see that, among other things, the small number of artifacts and the better contrast of the subcortical areas lead to an overall improved result of the 3D reconstruction. So, please, can you start the video? Well, in this video, as you see on the left side, Big Brain 1, on the right side, Big Brain 2. And players see your attention on, on the subcortical regions, and you see that the contrast on the Big Bang 2 is now much, much better than the Big Bang 1 data set. And also, the boundary of layer 1 is much smoother. All of the artifacts, some of the artifacts are still present in the Big Bang 1 data set, in the Big Bang 2, almost all artifacts are, are uh, improved and are corrected.
Okay, to conclude, uh, we have achieved an overall quality of the 3D reconstruction of Big Bang 2 that provides yet now uh, new insights into intersubject subject site identifiability. You can compare Big Bang 1 with Big Bang 2, for instance. It shows improved staining contrast of subcortical regions and an improved 3D alignment with uh, minimal jaggies. Uh, by transforming the data set to the MNI 1 and the 52 reference system, Big Bang 2 data can be directly integrated into the tools that use the MNI 1 and 52. Similar a transformation uh, of the cortical surface to other surfaces can be carried out, and thus, for instance, the ULIF brain address could be transformed into the Big Brain 2 world. Work currently in progress includes the transformation of all uh, labeled structures that have been uh, in, in ULIF uh, uh, annotated, uh, and uh, and for more, we want to uh, release this one with Micron dataset via eBrains. And third, we want to uh, further increase the resolution of data set. At, at the moment, every fifth section, which means that uh, the, inter uh, the, 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 the set resolution is 100 micron. In the final res uh, stage, we will reach the 20 micron uh, resolution. And finally, the improved uh, pipeline uh, should be used for the Big Brain 1 to further improve the quality of this data set too. So finally, I would like to thank our uh, team that, used, that is, that is uh, very helpful for the quality control in every stage of the processing. Uh, and I also want to thank uh, Louis and Lindsay and uh, Philip and uh, Mona for their help with Atli 3D and uh, with the support to, uh, with MSM. So thanks a lot. Okay, I think we have time for one quick question, if anybody has a burning question. Yep. The first or the second one? Yeah, the first or the second one? Uh, the one comparing the Big Brain 1 with the Big Brain 2. Mm -hmm. In the Big Brain 2, it's vis very visible, a kind of, I don't know if it's an artifact, but like diagonal bands. Yeah, this uh, is an artifact. This is a, the optical balancing have to be improved. Okay. Yeah, this is a problem of the optical balancing. It's not the final stage. Uh, that's a uh, uh, well. That, 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 the optical balancing is now really strongly linked to the MRI dataset, and uh, it seems so that the MRI dataset has some in, uh, and some in, in homogeneities that are not yet corrected. But this is uh, not a big deal. This is, uh, it has to be processed again with, as, with respect to this, this point. And, but then this should be gone. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, could I just ask a follow-up question? The video, in that video, the big brain one, was that the original corona sections you were showing? Uh, what, do you mean, what do you mean with uh, original corona sections? So, we all know that when we section brains, we aim to section them in a coronal plane, you know, perpendicular to the CACP line. Yeah and we know that it's not always possible to do that. The video you showed of uh, Big Brain 2, that is definitely a reconstructed and re-sliced image, or, or it showed images, right? No. That's it. One, uh, one moment, uh, I, can, I can go back here. Where is it? Uh, so you made this video, yeah? Yep. Yeah, no, this, uh, well, in the pipeline, uh, the, 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 the original sectional plane is always, uh, is not changed. They're both in, in uh, MNI 152 space, they're both being resampled. In this video? Yeah, they're both in MNI 152 space, they're not the original section. As far as I know, uh, they are. They've been resampled into. Okay. The one on the right has definitely been resampled. The one on the left, I, I'm not sure. That's what I was asking. Yeah, I, 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 so, I, okay, I understand. Uh, sorry. For, for this video, Claude tried to, uh, to, to match these planes as good as possible. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And yeah, therefore, they are rotated, yeah. Bo both, both data sets are rotated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what you have done, but of course, you have tried to find the, a oh. comparable section plane, and therefore, yeah, they are rotated. Yeah. Ex exactly, and he's yeah. done a beautiful job, and his reconstruction is so good, that that's why, that's why I was asking if the, the images that were shown from Big Brain 1 were the original 
you know, sections. Okay, thank you.